I'm Shelley Fries. Um, I'm an artist from Miles City, Montana. And I'm here at Queen City Framing and Art Supplies doing an opening reception. They are kind enough to feature my children's art all through the month of August. I have two children's books here that I've done. One is a little ABC book called Teeny Tiny ABC. And then I also love to do really quirky, vibrant, vivid, um, funny, silly Mother Goose paintings. I'm afraid Mother Goose is starting to kind of die out among the younger kids. And I grew up on Mother Goose as most of us did and just love it. And it really helped me learn to read. So I'm hoping to make the uh, rhymes popular again with my art. So my other book is a small book of Mother Goose rhymes and songs called Fun with Mother Goose. Um, and I've always been obsessed with Mother Goose. I've always wondered about those characters like Humpty Dumpty, okay, he falls off the wall. They ask the king's horses and the king's men if they can fix him. No one thinks to ask the queen. You know, she would probably be right there with her glue and <laughs> be able to fix that guy right up. And then if you think about Hickety Pickety, My Black Hen, she lays eggs for gentlemen. Well, why gentlemen? Why never ladies? So in my painting, I don't know if you can see it, uh, we'd be over here. This one, I made all of the gentlemen, the so-called gentlemen, are all predators that would visit a hen house, not to just pick up eggs, but to break in and take eggs. So Hickety Pickety, even her little chicks are saying, Mama, what are you doing <laughs> giving away these eggs to these gentlemen? Uh, they're all in 1940s natty kind of suits. And we have a fox, a raccoon, and a weasel waiting to pick up their eggs, very gentlemanly like. <laughs> this is Teeny Tiny ABC. And this is the one that goes through the four seasons with Annika and all her animal friends. Those are quail feathers that she's made her skirt from. And she has a little acorn cap. And when I got about to the middle of the alphabet, I thought I can't make her too girly because I want boys to like this book too. So she changes into her winter play clothes um, about I and takes ice skating lessons from indigo bunting and things like that. And then she, she is uh, going through the entire winter. And by the time it comes to spring, I figured she'd had the same play clothes on all winter. So M is the, the turn to spring. It was probably time for some laundry <laughs> doing. So this was just great fun because I could dive into the dictionary and look for lots of natural history words that had to do with um, each letter and learn about birds and plants and flowers and insects and animals for this book. And then this is Fun with Mother Goose. The pig is little Hamlet. And when you get to his page, his rhyme, you'll see that Hamlet is not destined for the dining room table on Sunday dinner. He has, he's gonna be a, a pampered pig pet by the time he gets home, in case anybody was worried about that. So. And then there's this series of prints. Okay. These are unusual alphabet prints. And these are, the originals are done, these are prints, but the originals were done on cold press, uh, heavy duty arches watercolor. I wanted the kind of rougher look for that with more texture and things. And each one comes with a label on the back that identifies what's in the art. So this is kelp freshwater kelp, koi, and a katydid. So there's A to Z on there too. This is called the Quite Contrary Calendar. And this is the second year that I've done a calendar with this character. She's Mary Mary Quite Contrary. She started off as a standalone painting that I have right here. And she's a 1920s jazz age flapper. She's based on one of my grandmothers, my dad's mother, who was a young woman during the 20s. And um, it, it just follows her throughout the year. This year, she has met a guy on the ski slopes. And his name is Arthur. And he's a typical man of his, of his time, skilled on the ukulele, <laughs> and so on. Um, so this is the 2019 calendar. So here they are having a meet cute on the ski slopes. <laughs> and every month, she's in a different authentic 1920s um, apparel. It was fun to research that. So everything that she's wearing is based on old patterns, um, old catalogs, and old images, photographs of this era. And the clothing was just marvelous. Always the cat, the mouse, and the hedgehog. They're in every picture. 
Uh, this one, <laughs> the cat has caught a fish and interrupted it, what might be their first kiss. <laughs> oh. And here she's showing off her ring. This is the May painting to her friend Madge. I don't know if you want to see all of them, but. And there's the June painting, the little picnic. July is, of course, fireworks and sparklers. August, they're at the beach. Oop, you know, I cut my fingernails and now it's like, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then September is the fair. And that's based on an old photograph of an old, um, of an old roller coaster. October. Those are authentic 1920s costumes, the Keystone Cops costume and then the Peacock costume. November is a fitting for the wedding. And December, of course, is the Christmas time wedding. So the 2020 calendar will be there around the world wedding cruise. So it'll be like February in Fiji and March in Marseille and things like that. And of course the cat, the mouse and the hedgehog will be along too. <laughs> I do these ones on um, clay surface boards called aqua board. It's made especially for watercolor artists. And what I love about it is you can be a kamikaze, jump in with both feet, don't plan ahead watercolor painter. And if you do that on paper, you end up starting over again. Um, but the clay surface board is a masonite board with a thin skim coat of white kale and clay on the surface. So what that means is you can remove paint. So if you screw up, you can remove some paint. Um, and like on this one, this is Handy Pandy Jack a Dandy, um, all about the kid who loves plum cake and sugar candy. So I made him very bendy and the chickens have gotten into the bubble gum here and are floating away. But the paint removal that you can do with this wonderful board, I was able to do all of this background here for Gander's Grocery after I'd laid down the blue background. I could go in with a, a just a damp brush and scrub away and pull out the steps here and the sign and some of the background detail doing that and you just could never get away with that on paper. <laughs> I still do use paper for other projects. The one on the end there is um, Polly Put the Kettle On and that one is on paper. Um, for my book project, Teeny Tiny ABC was on paper because I needed some really fine detail. The character is about four inches high. This one is called Coffee and Tea, and it is a Mother Goose rhyme that I had never heard of about two crabby sisters who are fighting over whether coffee is better or whether tea is better. And I was thinking about the shape of a coffee pot and the shape of a teapot and how those two shapes differ. And I thought, oh, it would be so fun to make the tea sister's face the same shape as a teapot with a rounded base. And then the coffee sister have a beaky nose like the coffee pot here. Um, and so um, I kind of thought about queens of hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs in your card deck, and some of their head dresses is based on that. But if you look here, I don't know if you know what coffee flowers and tea flowers look like. I know I didn't until I began working on this piece, but the tea sisters embroidered flowers are tea flowers. That's how tea blooms when it's on the hillside. And the coffee sisters um, flowers are coffee flowers. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that went into researching and getting ready for that painting. Um, the china in the painting is based on my mother's old china set. So there's a lot of, of fun background stuff that went into that painting. I have had a studio um, about three blocks from my house in the old Ursuline convent. They call it Miles City Academy now for 24 years. And I can tell you that, boy, I threw out a lot of bad art trying to get my skills to where they are, where I can produce things that I'm sort of happy with. So for anyone out there who might be struggling, don't get discouraged because even your screw ups and your mistakes you learn from, probably you learn more from those than you do from everything that goes right the first time. So, you know, don't get discouraged. Just keep going and, and educate yourself along the way and just try stuff. Just, just try different techniques and different um, 
methods of doing things, different order of doing things, whatever, different materials, um, all of that can really help. I'm really inspired, of course, by children's books. I grew up on a windy wheat farm about um, an hour north of Great Falls and the, the wind just never quit blowing. And so we were out there and it was either stand out in the wind like this and be bored or find someplace sheltered where you could sit and dream. And so Teeny Tiny ABC is really based on um, finding a little place of shelter. And one of those for me was my dad's dry irrigation ditch. You could get down in that. And if you sat down, the grasses would close over your head and it was very quiet and very still down there. So you could watch the insects and all the life and, and look closely at the plants and things. So when I started working on that book, I was inspired by looking at nature up close as if you were about four inches high. I would like to thank the Montana Arts Council, especially the Montana Entrepreneur Program, or MAP. Um, it still exists. There are a couple cohorts that you can join. There's uh, one, I think, in Missoula area and one in the Bozeman area. MAP was started as an outreach to artists in rural areas, and it taught artists, it teaches artists how to market their work because you can be the most wonderful artist in the world and if you don't know how to get what you do out there in the public eye, you're just dead in the water. So I took the course in 2015, um, it's pretty rigorous. You produce a whole toolbox of marketing um, tools that you can then use to brand your work and to get your work out there. It teaches you how to uh, get it out there electronically as well as you know physical as far as booths and booth shows and, and things like this. Uh, MAP, Marta Montana Entrepreneur Program changed my life and I can't thank the Montana Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts enough for that. I do have a website and my um, company name is, my studio name is Dancing Cow Studio. My cows are Wellington and Constance and they're very much more light-footed and graceful than I am. Um, so dancingcowstudio.com will get you to my website and it's possible to purchase these items and, and more through my Square store by just clicking through the website. I also have a page on Facebook and I'm on Instagram as well.